Hello, everyone. Welcome back to All the Right Reasons with Kayla and Debbie. Debbie, how are you? I'm doing so great. How are you, are my darling? You? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, yeah. It's been like such a busy week. Girl. Uh, there's so much going on. I just came back from California on um, yes, Sunday. Okay. So like, yeah, it was it was such a great trip. I had a great time. The show mm -hmm. went really well and stuff. I think I talked to y'all about it last week, but yeah, um, yeah. And then came back home. Like, there's a big Christmas showcase at my church, oh, and nice. um, it's like basically a musical. Like, I talked to like <laughs> my god brother who runs like the the um you know ministry. Mm -hmm. I'm like, are y'all trying to win an Emmy? Like, really? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> like. So having rehearsals That's every awesome. night and um, That's great. yeah, but anyway, how have you been That's feeling? Been I know you so like, fun. You like yeah, like fun. I just, ugh, I feel like it's going around. Like every time I turn around, the crazy thing is my kids come home from school and they're like, mom, my whole class is sick. And I'm just like laying hands, like in Jesus name, <laughs> you're not kidding. And somehow they haven't got it. Like I mm. got this random little like congestion thing, but I was just, you know mm. how like sometimes when you're sick, you're like, I need to just be in the bed and just sleep. Yep. But then there's other times where you're like, I just don't have time to be sick. So yeah. I just got to keep on moving. Got to keep pushing. <laughs> it's so just true. Keep on going. So it's just that time yeah. of year where it's like, it's just, it's like hectic. But, you know, there's nothing like Christmas when you have kids. Like, I mean, right. Literally, like, I have, I've bought, I mean, I had their Christmas presents like in September. So, oh, you're I'm, on it. Girl, I was on it this year. I was like, this is the year I'm that so I'm great. not going to be stressed out. And it's going to be a nice, I think one it's going to be really day, nice. One day that's going to be me. I literally woke up this morning like, oh my God, Christmas is next week. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. And we don't do like, because we're older now. So me, right. me and my brothers are all in our 20s. So like, you know, my parents, we don't, we don't really do gifts. We just like right. hang out and right. like maybe do one or two things, maybe right. get one thing for each other. Mm -hmm. but I still want to do something for my parents. Still want to, you know, get little things for some of my best friends. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh my God, I need to like figure that out ASAP. But girl, uh, it is next week. It Literally. is next week. So yeah, yeah that's but, my life right now. Just running yeah. around being a mom and being a wife and yeah. being a pastor and it's just yes. all the things just and being a podcaster and being a pot guys we are <laughs> official podcasters like we really yes. are we're really excited we have so much coming so please make sure you like and subscribe hit that notification bell because mm -hmm. you want to stay tuned with what yeah. we're going to be doing because we have a lot of stuff in store so we're yeah. excited for sure we're super excited um, but yeah, like what Deb was saying, also make sure if you're listening on the podcast, you give us a great review because it really does help us out. And if you're listening on Spotify too, I think you can follow us, um, our profile on Spotify. So yeah, um, there's so much to talk about this episode. We're going to be talking some pop culture news and batch nation news, and then we're going to break down season two of HBO's The White Lotus. Ooh, which, I can't wait. Guys, if you didn't watch this show, we'll get to it. By the time get we to get to it, you're gonna be like, I need to watch this show. Mm -hmm. Um, but also before we before we start, I just want to also remind everybody, um, if you didn't watch last week, we mentioned that at the top of the year we're gonna do an episode where we answer your dating questions, give you some relationship advice. Um, so to do that, we have to like you know, get those questions from you guys. So make sure you are commenting down below. There's also a um, community. There's also a place you can write your questions in our community tab on our YouTube channel um, or even like DMing me or Deb works too. But yep. yeah, so make sure you do that. We're so excited for that. Um, and then Deb will talk about what we're going to do next week at the end of the episode. So yep, let's dive in. Um, so yesterday... Uh, there was some, some pretty upsetting news that I think most people, uh, became aware of very shocking, very heartbreaking, but mostly just very, very shocking, um, yeah. that Steven Twitch boss passed away. Um, basically, um, his wife, Allison found, well, let me start with, if you don't know who Twitch is, he, um, I mean, he's an entertainer all around. Yep. 
Um, he started off on So You Think You Can Dance, where he was like, I think he made it to the final four, I think, Deb. He was runner up. Um, he was runner up. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Uh, and then he became like, he became like kind of a, um, a pro on that show. And then he met his wife, Allison. Yeah, all star. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he met his wife, Allison, who's a, who was a pro on Dancing with the Stars. She was also on So You Think You Can Dance as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, he's been in Step Up. The main thing he's also done is he was like a, a co-producer on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And he was like the kind of house DJ and super yeah. involved with that show. If you watched Ellen's talk show. Yeah. And so basically, I guess what happened is that Allison, his wife, called the police saying that he left the house um, without his car. And it was very unusual. And then she didn't know where he was, basically. And then the following day, the police got a call from a hotel nearby, um, basically saying there was a shooting. Um, the police showed up and they found Twitch's body. Uh, Self-inflicted gunshot wound. So um, they determined that it was death by suicide. And yeah, I think it was just something that shook Hollywood um, because he was so involved with so many different people in Hollywood and worked with so many people. I mean, Justin Timberlake made a statement yeah. and of course Ellen and yeah. I know Tabitha <laughs> Brown was really affected. I saw her video on Twitter the other day or Instagram, excuse me. Um, but of course his wife was just, you know, she, I think she made a statement to people saying that it feels like she's living a nightmare, like, and that, you know, all yeah. she can say is that she misses him. And so, yeah, I mean, I called Deb when it happened. Well, we were already on the phone and then I, or no, you called me. Yeah, because like you, you texted me. Did you hear that Twitch, You did you hear Twitch died? And I was like, mm -hmm. what? Twitch, Twitch? Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then literally at the same time, my husband texted me like the exact thing you texted me. It was like, I don't know did if it was TMZ. Yeah, yeah, or it was like the article that he passed. And I was just like, what is happening? And so mm -hmm. I, you know, we FaceTimed and I was just like, what? Like, yeah. um, and then just hearing all the details, it's just, it was like a heartbreaking day yesterday for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just as someone like, you know, we, I loved him from the very beginning. I never knew he was on, like Wade Robson actually had a show that he was on. That's when he mm. first got his start in like entertainment, you know, publicly. And then he was on star search as well. Um, and okay. then he was on. So you think you can dance when we were all fans. I was a fan of Allison season two. We used yep. to, you know, we were obsessed. Yeah, with we, that were, show. we were, yeah, we loved that show. We loved, I mean, I went to the tours, everything. So yeah, we, same. I mean, Twitch <laughs> was like our favorite. I saw him live. Yeah. I saw him. Yeah, yeah. And like when him and Allison got together, it was just like, oh my God. And then she became a pro on Dance with the Stars after that. So, mm -hmm. um, but then, yeah, he joined Ellen, you know, and then he's just been like, like you said, an entertainer that's been around, he's just been doing, it was so crazy because the other day, like me and my kids always watch, you know, Christmas stuff around this time of year, of course, every night we're like watching a Christmas movie or something. Mm -hmm. And I was just on Disney plus and they did like the urban nutcracker. And yeah. he like, it, he like choreographed it. Like him and mm -hmm. Allison were all in it. It was like, yeah. it was, you could tell he had a, a big hand in it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was just crazy. I was just watching no, it's, that, it's, you know, yeah. and and so anyway, it, it was just a heartbreaking, um, heartbreaking news. And, and, you know, it's just a, it's one of those moments where, um, you know, I feel like we've just been hearing a lot about people dying by suicide, like recently, especially, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I, it's just one of those things where you just, you never know what people are going through. And yeah you know, this, this, this guy was larger than life, like life of the yeah. party, always smiling, always just happy, bringing joy, bringing love, bringing light to the world and everything he does from the beginning, like from every moment you saw him, um, it just, it, it was like, he was the last person you would have thought would be struggling the way it, it, it was, it, you know, we're sure he it was seemed to be, it yeah. seemed to be. And so it's just, you know, in the world we live in of like, you know, look, all the Instagram and all the putting it out, the, you know, and that's all great. But like, you know, there are there are people that are really struggling. And like, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's important for us to just really remember, like, you know, 
these are human beings and like Mm -hmm. they, you know, they, we all need to like be focused on our mental health and like do what we need to do because it's just heartbreak. Of course, the most heartbreaking thing for me was like, he has two, like, I mean, he has three children, 14, Mm -hmm. six and three. Yeah. And, um, for his wife, for his children, you know, of course I was just praying for them yesterday. Literally. Yeah. Like I had rehearsal last night and I was like, we're going to yeah. pray. Like we're literally about to pray for Twitch. So wow. we're to pray for his family. And, mm-hmm. um, so it was, it's just one of those really heartbreaking stories. Um, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. And it's, it's, I watched Tabitha Brown. She, she made a just kind of reaction video, but I think she felt led to make it because she was like, one you never know what someone's going through but two like you guys have to know like it it was like you could get that what she was saying a part of it was like his loss like him being gone from the world is literally affecting people across in like the entertainment world yeah and she was just like yo no matter how hard life gets because it's gonna get hard and there's gonna be times where you you want to just quit, but yeah. there's, but she was like, I had a moment like that where I just was like, I just want to quit. This is not mm-hmm. going well. And I, but then it, then it did get better. Yeah. And so she's like, it's always going to get better. Trust yes. me. Yes. We need you. Like you, you deserve to be here, you know? Yeah. And I got so emotional because it kind of just sunk in. Yeah. And so yeah, if anyone out there um, is is struggling with their mental health, I'm gonna put something in the uh, description box. Yes, um, that I think would be helpful if you're struggling because, like I just said, like Tabitha was saying, like you deserve to be here, yes. um, and you owe it to yourself to like, <clears throat> you know, get what you need and get the help that you need. Um, I can definitely say yeah. I've been there as well, where I was just Girl, really yeah. really low. Yeah. And I and it did better for me, you know. Yeah. Um, so there's always hope. Yes, and, and you um, matter. Like you matter to the world. There's, you do. A you're here. there's a reason you're here, and you matter. And don't yeah. ever think you don't, because you do. Yeah, it's it's so important for people to know, like to think, to have that thought of like everyone will be better off. Like no, we will yeah. not be better off. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so. that's. Oh, yeah, it was really, really hard yesterday. Like, it, you know, there yeah. are those moments like in the past couple of years, you know, when when Kobe died or when mm-hmm. even even Chadwick, like it was shocking. Yeah. You know? But in those situations, it was like, oh, man, like it just it's one of those things that just happens. And you're like, gosh. Right. You know? But this situation, it was like, oh, my God. You know, yeah. it, it was it was just yeah, it was one of those things. But um, yeah. we're praying for his family. Yes. Let's keep his family in prayer Family in prayer um, for sure. All right, you want to go to all right. I mean, I hate to just like jump in. I know this foolishness. (laughs) I know. Um, but yeah, we just like there wasn't a lot of batch nation news this week. It was just, I mean, pretty okay. So the first thing we were gonna just like jump into was like or just touch on was like Aaron, the whole Aaron and Genevieve mess, and how like there's just been girls coming out of the woodwork and like you know, trying to say he was dating me too and all this different stuff. Mm -hmm. And Aaron is really fighting back. Like, he's really like, yeah, like these people weren't my girlfriend. And like, I, you know, he, he, he's trying to like push back for sure. And Mm -hmm. it did make me think, you know, we've had these kinds of conversations where we're just like, okay, like when the Nate situation happened, when these girls were coming out about Nate, you know, And I think our posture for sure was just kind of like, all right, I understand. Oh, Gabby's Nate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gabby's (laughs) Nate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Not Nate Olakoya, but Nate. I don't know Mm -hmm. his last name, but Gabby's Nate. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, our posture was really kind of like, you know, look, these people have these dating histories before they came on the show. Nobody is perfect. Um, Nobody's history is going to be squeaky clean, but it's not like. The, the it's always somewhere in the middle. Like, it's not like he's this horrible guy or he's this perfect guy, you know, but nobody is like, you yeah. know, and is it, you know, we do have to realize there are these people that come out and say these things because they just want 
they want their minute in the spotlight or whatever, you know, or mm-hmm. even if, even if, yeah, he was dating multiple people, I hate to say it, but it's like a lot of these people do that. A lot of people do that. Like they date multiple people until they decide to be exclusive with someone. And, you know, there's a discrepancy in like, when is that conversation where we decide to be exclusive with each other? You know what I mean? So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. I just don't think that that's really the case with Aaron. I mean, I think to me, okay, well, let me say this first. Mm -hmm. I think the reason why people are maybe harsher on Aaron or I'm, I'll let me say, talk, let me speak for myself. The reason why I'm just like, yeah, Aaron is being trash is because I've seen him be trash on the show. Like I've seen him be like Aggie. I've seen him be like, not really the most mature. I've seen him, you know what I'm saying? Whereas Nate on Gabby's season, it was like, but okay, wait, Nate is so kind. He's so blocked. So I'm saying like those two yeah. things tied together makes your brain go. Yeah. So you're just like being fake. But like, I don't know though, because here being I feel like this, this season he was like, Aaron was actually like, he was That's one fair. of the, you know what I mean? If you yeah. think about it, like That's why fair in, in a way, I think in a way it was like his intention was trying to be there. I'm just, the only point I'm making is like, they're two kind of like um, Nate and, and Aaron are very two different people and within this franchise. Sure. But I also think that there's a, there's an issue here, even with Nate and Gabby's Nate and Aaron, where it's like, they're, they're leaning on this, uh well the 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 uh the title was never there Mm -hmm. it's like okay Mm -hmm. but if it quacks like a duck if it walks like a duck it's a duck like you were dating this girl for x amount of time if they were living together if they were so it's like yes you were but yeah but i'm saying if i was if i was dating somebody consistently for over five months, we we're dating. Like it's not like oh, I yeah. went out with her, and I went. So, so I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, I can see why why this is a specific situation where it's like, yeah, that's kind of trash. Like you're telling me, oh no, she's just my friend. Like it's not like that. And then you're also telling her the same thing about me. Like you're also kind of mm-hmm. lying. Yeah. And then you're dro- breaking up with them just to go on the show. And then once you leave the show, you go back with them. It's all giving like mm-hmm. you're being sleazy. You're being calculated. And I think he's his defense is like, well, I show her the text messages and she was cool with it. Yeah, but they've also said you showed them the text messages and you were like, they're just my friend. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, Aaron, just be like, <laughs> look, I made mistakes. I, yeah, look, I mean, this is who I'm with now. Like, why try to fight it? It's like, yeah. It was kind of, <laughs> Kind of I don't know. I, I, I just feel like if I felt that if I felt the way I felt about Nate, I feel I, I feel like why do I feel differently about Aaron? Because you remember, like in the beginning, I was just like, Aaron, please go away. Like I was not for Aaron. And then yeah. all season, I was like, you know what? He was more mature in most situations than Genevieve in, in most situations. I mean, did they have a healthy relationship? No. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, most equally ma- immature. But. Yeah, but I feel like in the grand scheme of things, he was he his mindset was a little sometimes I would when they would have their disagreements, I would be like, I mean, other than the stupid ones, but like when they would <laughs> yeah. have certain things, I'd be like, Aaron is like, no, I, I hear what you're saying, you yeah, know what I mean? True. So mm-hmm. I just feel like then I jump ship because I was like, oh, my God, he got all these girls. But then I thought about it and I was like, well, how is that different, though, from the Nate situation? And I felt differently. Yes, I know they're two very different people. I get that. And maybe Aaron, you know, his dating is a little more, you know, maybe it is a little more frat boy, you know, but he from, gives frat boy. And I yeah, think the other, but, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. Sorry. Oh, well, I was just going to say, you know, but I feel like the way he act, I, 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 I just, I don't want to say it was an act. Because I feel like the way he was yeah. with Genevieve, even in the beginning of the show, <laughs> I, I was starting to be like, well, was this just an act? I feel like, no, he is a nice guy. He's not trying to be a douche. Now, is he is he dating around like a lot of people are? Probably. And yes, I hear what you're saying, but it's like, until you have that conversation about we are now exclusive. I don't care how long y'all date. Y'all shouldn't listen. Don't date that long without having that You're right. conversation. You're right. Because if you, yeah, whether it's six months, nine months, 
I mean, living together is a whole nother thing, but for sure. But, but if y'all been dating for however long, if you've never had that conversation, then no, you, you definitely, that, that plays a part into to. it. You have yeah. to own that responsibility. But I think the other difference is like when it came out with Nate, he was like, no, that's a, that was a hundred percent wrong. Like, I'm sorry. And, and it, some people were like, oh, he's just doing that because he wants to be the bachelor. No. Exactly. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Whereas Aaron is like, no, we like he's trying to defend it. And it's like, it's yeah. honestly not, it's honestly fine. It's not like you cheated on anybody. Right. Just say that's what it was. Mm-hmm. But it's the fact that he's trying to like push back. It's like giving. You I know think what I'm trying to say. Yeah, <laughs> I do. But like I annoying. think he's pushing like, back because of how quickly we jump ship because he knows the, the, the perception of him is this frat boy. And he's just like, he's trying to be like, no, that's not, I, I'm not that. Like, and for a hot second, I, I was like, no, Aaron think- is sweet. Like, I did for a second in the beginning of the season yeah. be like, oh my God, Aaron is like, the way he's treating her is so not what I thought. Like, mm-hmm. so instead of, and it's because so many people are jumping ship and being like, that was calculated. That was all an act. That yeah, was- I don't think it was an act, but you I, know. I, I do think that there is a part of it where it's like, I think there's a, I think there's what what you were saying earlier. There's always like a middle space to it. I'm not saying you were going out there to be like, I'm going to pretend like I'm in love with Genevieve, but you, you kind of were just like, well, I'll just go back over here and do whatever I want. And whoever's emotions are in the wake of that. It is what it is. Like, I don't really care. Like you weren't being thoughtful or very intentional, you were just kind of doing stuff, which is fine. You just, I just want him to be more like own up to it. Anyway, that's fair. That's fair. All right. Next up, we have okay. Pilot P. I really don't even know why we put this on here because <laughs> no, nobody cares about this. No, nobody is nobody talking about no, them. Nobody cares. Like, there are certain people they that are back like, together, though. Like Clayton and Susie. I'm sorry to sidebar, but like Clayton and Susie, oh. if they don't stop talking about this breakup, I don't, guys. Can we? They were only how long were they together, Kayla? Were they even together that long? Uh, It was a little. It was a hot minute. Maybe like I'll give them maybe seven months. Okay, I mean, maybe eight. Anyway, that's a sidebar. I I just feel like people love to harp on stuff that it's like. What? Why? Why are we harping on this? Like, yeah, like she was on Nick's podcast, and I'm like. But I don't really get why we're still talking about like I love his podcast, but I'm like, but I don't really get why we're still talking to Susie about this. Anyway. Right. Why are we talking about it? Anyway, Pilot so, Pete and Kelly are back together, like fully. And they've been back together for a minute. They've been back together for a little minute. But we were yeah. we were like, are they really? And then it's like they did a red carpet recently where they were like literally kissing on the red carpet. And yeah. I was like, okay. And so here's here's my like thing, right? And when, I mm-hmm. remember when they f- even first started being seen together again and they were back together is I was like this is an example, like a perfect example of one like when you have when you have a lot of venom towards your ex, it's mm-hmm. proof that y'all yeah, you there's still feelings there. There's still feelings. Because yeah. there was there was so much venom coming from Kelly. When they mm-hmm. broke up, there was so mm-hmm. many interviews she was doing talking about how trash this dude was. Oh, wow. And I'm like, here you are back with him. So yeah. like one, obviously there was still something there, but two, it's like, be careful what you say. Like, just be careful because I wonder, like, how do you come back from that? Like, how do y'all get back together after you were dogging this dude out? Like, yeah. She was like going for it, Kayla. Do you remember some of the stuff she was saying? Like I never heard. No, I never heard any of that. No, I didn't I didn't fully about, watch that season. So well, no, but I yeah, know well, yeah. True. Yeah. Well, it was like postseason, but it was mm-hmm. like she was just talking about like how selfish he was, how like childish he was. She was talking about how she's so much smarter than him. He's not very smart. Like, oh, <gasps> like, oh my God. Say stuff like, yeah, I actually need someone who like, if I'm, if I'm moving, like they're going to actually help me. Like they're actually going to like come and lift boxes mm. and aren't going to be like, sorry, I can't, I'm, I'm, I actually need to fly to such a, like she was saying stuff like that. 
And I was wow, like, she was going Kelly. in. She was going in. And now Sheesh. y'all back together. Like what? Yeah, I, mean, that's weird. Back from, I, I just wonder. I, I, wonder I don't, I don't think it's going to last. If it lasts, I'll be so surprised because of what you just said, but also because Pete is just like, I just feel like he, I don't know that he's the, the issues with Pete yeah. are resolved. Like, has he really like grown into like, okay, I know what I want. I know how to be, I know how to like choose healthy relationships and be in like a healthy relationship at, and you know, the kind of, does he recognize his mother and Ooh, <laughs> like yeah. her effect on him and how that's changed how he, cause the way he was with these girls, like, Victoria F just has to start crying and he's like, all right, here's the rose. Like he's so <laughs> manip- he's so easily manipulated. Yeah, and I yeah. like, I don't know. To me, it's just him getting back with Kelly when she dogged him out is just Ooh, proof ew. to me that it's like he- And obviously, you know, he likes he likes for a girl. I mean, I hate to say it this way, but it, like he likes because Kelly is that very like strong personality, like. Mm-hmm. wearing the pants kind of person mm-hmm. so but maybe he maybe he likes that like maybe he wants that you know and if maybe he's fine, if you look at his parents you know it got, does kind of look that way you know that's like the dynamic that's the dynamic and maybe that's something he's like kind of like unknowingly gonna emulate yeah you know so anyway okay. interesting let me know y'all's thoughts below what y'all think of pilot <laughs> pete and kelly um, mm-hmm. lastly, before we jump into the white Lotus, um, so yeah, everyone's been talking about like Michelle kind of like ghosted, like bachelor happy hour, like, or she was just not around for a really long time. Like she's back. She now. hasn't been on since mm-hmm. November 8th or she, is she back? Well, she, I just saw an interview that she was on. It was her and oh. Becca and they were interviewing, um, their most recent one was um okay gosh, was it? yeah she was on she was on so, okay, so i don't back. know if they like yeah so if she was definitely on but i don't know so i don't know here's my theory let me know what yours is but my theory mm-hmm. is like i think that just post bachelor in paradise stuff it was just like she kind of wanted to just not be around for that <laughs> like and a lot of people have been dming me that. like they've been saying like she uh, you know, she wants to come off as though she's like, and not to say she still has feelings for Brandon or anything like that, but just like, <laughs> just kind of the how like mm-hmm. how wonderful that was to be like smack dab in the face of all of that in the midst of yeah, they they were really epic. It wasn't just like you know, <laughs> yeah. So or even if it's like reminiscent of her own engagement and how happy that was and how you know even if it's just like that was too painful to kind of be around in that moment um for him you know so I don't know that's my theory what do you think yeah I don't know I don't know about that Mm -hmm. um I don't even know if Brandon and Serene went on bachelor happy hour Mm -hmm. at all I don't, I don't think, think they, they did. did. So they probably just would have done a different bat. They did a different Bachelor Nation podcast, which was talking it out. So yeah, um, that's the one that they did anyway. But I maybe she just maybe she just decided that she just needed a mental health break. Um, that's she probably fair. signed a contract that she has to stay with them for an extended amount of time, like maybe at least at least like a year plus. Mm-hmm. So she couldn't yeah. like she couldn't. I knew she couldn't actually leave the pot. I don't think that that. That's probably not in her contract, but maybe she just asked for like a little bit of a break. Um, I know, you know, some people like Dave Neal were kind of theorizing, hey, like there was a lot going on, like from Gabby's season, she was really upset about with like them not fleshing out the blackface thing with Eric. And she was there. She thought that's what she was there for at the at the after the final rose. Mm -hmm. So maybe she has some discrepancies with the with the franchise. I mean, as she should. Like, yeah, absolutely. The Bachelor franchise is, they really, really are just struggling. Hot mess. It's a hot mess. I know yeah. the one podcast with the two guys of color talking it out are like, yeah, we're done. So thanks. Don't know what that's about, but yeah, um, Mike and Brian left. Um, I mean, there's other podcasts that are like ending, but I don't know. So mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe she just needed to 
it's a break. But I thought I didn't know if she was gonna come back. But then when she did, I was like, oh yeah, her contract. There's no way she could like not get out of that. But yeah, hopefully she's okay. I don't know. I don't want her to be like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, again, it's like circling back to the Twitch situation. It's like you just never know because you know and. Definitely have grace for people because even when you see like, oh, she posted something on Instagram and she looks so great and she's, you know, it's like all that stuff sometimes is like, it's nice, but yeah, um, it doesn't really speak to where someone really is. So um, I yeah. hope she's well. I hope she's going yeah. okay. Um, okay. So let's jump into let's the life loaded. It. Okay. So we're about to talk about the white lotus, guys. Probably – there's probably a good chunk of y'all that have never seen the show. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to give the first little bit of this breakdown to just talk about it spoiler free so that if you want to go watch it, which I hope you do, it's a really great show. It's a really um, good show. You go check it out. We're just going to talk about season two. Season one is completely different. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to talk about it spoiler free. So you can continue to watch, no stress, but you'll see the marker when it gets to the spoiler sh- section. If you've seen season two, you can continue to listen to our breakdown because we we going to break. <laughs> <laughs> or There's if you're just so like, you have no about. interest in watching the show and you That's don't true. care, then go ahead and keep watching. Then go ahead and keep watching. Because, and then still know, go watch it. <laughs> no, for sure. Because like yeah. the, the stuff we're going to talk about, we're definitely will have spoilers at some point, but like. We're, it's a lot of like relationship stuff that's mm-hmm. really going to be good. So you want to, yeah. you definitely want to watch um, really or watch, really finish, finish watching our pod so that you yeah. can hear uh, what we're going to say. But yeah, definitely check it out. Cause I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a show like everyone's talking about. And I think there's a reason for yeah. that. You know, that doesn't always happen. So exactly. Um, exactly. Oh so yeah. So okay. yeah. So basically the white Lotus is, is an American kind of black, dark, <clears throat> Uh, dark comedy drama anthology series on HBO Max created by Mike White. He's a writer and director. And so the basic premise is that a group of people, separate kind of, you know, different people come to this resort called the White Lotus to go on vacation. And uh, they're just, you know, going on vacation, but it ends up there's always like a murder. Mm-hmm. And you have to kind of continue to watch and find out who dies at the end, who kills them. But also it's, you know, satirical of, you know, relationships are kind of different issues, especially in privileged people's lives. Yep. And this kind of fantastical world that they live in because they have all this money and they're on the white lows. And so mm-hmm. a lot of things come out and um, as the story unfolds, it's like so many things emerging and unfolding yeah. and, different storylines converging with one another there's always like you know an ensemble cast of great actors movie actors you know um critically acclaimed actors all around um and so yeah um i i watched the first season Mm -hmm. and i i didn't love it i didn't (laughs) like it i was kind of like okay i can appreciate it for what it's trying to do as a satire or as a not even a satire but as a like mirror to like I think in that season it was about like money white privilege yeah and things like that Mm -hmm. but I just was like I don't really care about any of these characters I was like at the end of it when the person died I was like okay fine (laughs) but why like what was this all for you know and so yeah. I know I told Deb, but when I started season two, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, wait a minute. Now this is hooking me. <laughs> and um, I think the characters are just more likable in season mm-hmm. in season two. Um, I, so I, I ended up telling Deb about it, but she did watch. <laughs> you the did girl. watch them season one. And I was like, so- hey, I told you. I mean, yeah, Kayla was, she was so annoyed with me because she was like, you're going on and on about how bad season one is. And I told you not to watch it. But like, I'm just the type of person, guys, where like, I I I have to watch every part of the show. I can't, 
I can't, I'm not one of those people that can just turn on Criminal Minds and be like, oh, let's just watch Criminal Minds tonight. Like, if I've yeah. never seen it, I have to go back and watch, like, every episode it's ever had. I don't know. I'm just that way. So, yeah, I like, I was like, well, I got to watch season mm -hmm. one. And, I mean, part of me, Kay, was glad that I did, though, because mm. it definitely gave me, like, context for not just Jennifer Coolidge's character, because she is the one character, guys, who, like, yes. went from the, what was in both seasons and plays the same person. Um Whereas, like, in some anthology series, like a American Horror Story type show, mm -hmm. um, there can be, like, there can be actors who play in multiple who play seasons, different characters, but they play yeah. different characters, you know? So, For but sure. she was the same person. And so it was, it was definitely good because it gave you a little bit of a backstory on her a little bit. And it just, yeah. it did frame just, like, the feel of, of the whole thing. The show, yeah. But I agree with you. Like, I think the the right well i don't want to say the writing the writing was good it was just like you said the characters just weren't as fully fleshed out and thought mm -hmm. out and like they weren't as of, complex yeah and none or of them they were, were but likable yeah. yeah it was like to me some you have to like at least some person or at least be <laughs> interested in like the mm -hmm. complexity of them like because there are a lot of, I think what makes a character interesting is when they're not all good or all bad. When there yeah. is that like gray area, but you got to have a little bit of some of both. Otherwise it's like, why am I watching this? You know, like yeah. I feel like a Dexter, you're like, oh, he's a serial killer, but he kills serial killers. So he has, mm -hmm. you know, some heart or some, you know, there mm -hmm. has to be something like that. There's but some anyway, good to this exactly, person. <laughs> to make me want to watch. But but it was it was interesting too though just real quick when when it came mm -hmm. to season one the thing that was interesting about even the death in season one was just that like there was no conversation about like when the guy the guy who killed him mm -hmm. he was just a white man so it was yep. like there was no ramifications like at all yep. like no you ram notice, ramifications like, yeah there was no ramifications it was just kind of like. I, I mean nothing came of the fact that this man literally murdered I mean it was an accident but. Right. It was kind of like not yep. the of that, which was interesting. So, yeah. you know, um, but yeah, my overall thoughts just on like season two, just non-spoiler is just mm -hmm. definitely it was a lot more well-written, a lot more thought out in terms of just character development um, and the camaraderie of the actors together, yeah. the scenes themselves, like it was just, it just felt a lot more thought through and like mm -hmm. more it just was more thorough for me and yes yeah um and just super intriguing super interesting so many elements that are so interesting to think about and talk about in so many different aspects you know yes. when it comes to sex when it comes to money when it comes to you know generations and mm -hmm. their kind of issues and mm -hmm. when it comes to like couples and marriages or you know it, it was just a so lot good. so much to like dive into so much to unpack into. yeah um sure. it's so it's true really and yeah it was it was really really good and i think what the show also does really well in season two is that because season one it was like okay this is just a dark comedy i'm not really supposed to take it that deep that serious it's right. just kind of like saying it's kind of like having little hints of satire but then we're just going back to like kind of like weird jokes and dark elements yeah but in season two it was more it, they found a great way for it to still have like these funny kind of breaths of fresh air where you're like oh that was funny like you could still right. laugh but then you'd go into these scenes where you're like oh my god like my heart is racing right now watching you know the married yeah. couple argue or right. watch or trying to figure out what's behind Theo James' eyes right now in the scene. <laughs> like, what is going on? You know, what's going to happen with Tanya's character? And so, um, yeah. So I'll briefly kind of say like the 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 different um, character storylines, and then we'll go into the spoiler section if that's cool with you, Deb. Okay, cool. Um, just so people can get a sense of like, okay, who's in season season two? So, um, so one of the storylines involves Aubrey Plaza's uh, character Harper, her husband Ethan, played by Will Sharp, and they're on vacation. They get invited on vacation by 
Ethan's old college roommate, Cameron, played by Theo James, and his wife, Daphne. Who I love, Theo James. Theo oh James God. was so – Yeah, he's so hot. But he was so good in this show. He was so good in this show. Delicious. He was. Oh, he was so horribly delicious. <laughs> yes. Um. So Harper and Ethan have this kind of marriage that's – you could tell that they they've obviously been they've been married for a while. They know each other really well and there there's a connection. But and there's strong connection but they're having a there, there's a disconnect physically. Um and among other things we'll go into. But yeah, then there's kind of like okay, Cameron and Daphne, they're like friends but they're not like best friends. They're like you know, and so they're kind of like why do they invite us on this vacation? Um, Cameron and Ethan are both in like tech and finance. And so, yep. you know, they're trying to figure out, are they trying to get us to invest in with right. them because they just got, uh, you know, Harper and Ethan just came into money. Right. And so there's just that whole thing. But I think it ends up kind of being more about Ethan and Harper's marriage in comparison to Cameron and Daphne and all that gets teased out from that and there's Ooh. just so many underlying things about like about sex like sex in a marriage but also yeah. there's things even with Cameron and Ethan about like masculinity toxic masculinity and yeah. alpha yeah. dog kind of things so fascinating to watch these actors and it, it was a good point that you made earlier Deb I think it really involved these characters or these actors that there was a lot of like good chemistry between sure. these actors yep. um that they just you <clears throat> felt like it was real so um so that's them um Deb, well, Deb, you like, want to talk about the Degrassos? i was gonna say let's why don't we just talk about them like we're going getting into the spoiler part so let's just yeah talk do you want to just yeah let's start talking about them and then we can frame the next part you know the next okay cool kind of, so we're yeah. we're just gonna go ahead and go into spoilers now yes but Hopefully. watch you guys you want to yeah. watch <laughs> please i know because i'm like i'm trying to like contain it but i'm like talking about it. let's do it let's go let's do it because okay. there, I mean, honestly there's a lot of people that are probably like i don't know i'm i'll watch it at some point but like you can spoil it it's fine yeah, yeah that's okay. how my mom is honestly so I, i'm that way sometimes too when it's certain kind of things i'm like eh, it's fine yeah. um Okay, okay, so let's talk about like because obviously this foursome is like mainly together. There are other characters that they do con uh, in encounter at a certain point, but for, for sure. the main part, for the main uh, point of it, it's like the four of them is like are on vacation together. And um, so okay, so let's talk where about where do where do we begin? Like, okay, let's talk about first. Let's just talk about the contrast between their marriages and how. Yeah how those how the differences and because I thought that was interesting how mm -hmm. you know as someone who's who's married like you you yeah. know are you and I mean on, honestly all of us do it like we compare ourselves right we mm -hmm. we look at what someone else has or how someone else kind of is and we think like should I be that way or why M maybe I should be more of that like that person or whatever mm -hmm. um and so I think in marriage that happens too where it's like you know, so it was clear that Cameron and Daphne have this very like on the surface, like mm -hmm. happy marriage and they have yep. children and, you know, they're just very lovey dovey. They're affectionate. They're like jumping each other's bones all the time. Like mm -hmm. just it's very, you know, but as we dig deeper, we see that like, you know, Cameron's probably not very faithful like he's mm -hmm. you know and Daphne kind of like knows that but mm -hmm. she's kind of decided like I'm not going to be a victim I'm not gonna this is not it, it was almost like she's not gonna let that be the thing that that ends her marriage it's just kind of like yeah there's things that happen in a marriage there's things that you don't always know or you don't need to know you know hey he's gonna do that and then I do I may do something myself and it's fine. Like we're okay. And you know, and it's interesting too, Kay, because like there was this moment too where like with Cameron and Daphne, where mm -hmm. where like she was, I don't know if it was like she came back from a massage or something and she was like, Yeah, the guy who, you know, mm -hmm. gave the massage was just like, oh, he was like, you know, and he was just like, Oh, really? What were you doing? You know, mm -hmm. what? He, and he like got on top of her, like 
it yeah. was like a turn on like oh so what were you doing with him like it yep. was just like there were other like, moments like oh, that too yeah it's like, like but the thing that's yeah. fascinating with that is that they kind of like they kind of like play around what that they know that they cheat on each other like yeah which is because even it's like <laughs> even when they they girls come back from noto which i can't wait to talk about that <laughs> whole thing yeah but there's a moment where she's like oh like harper thinks you guys did something bad while we were in noto and he's like mm. oh really like they that whole scene you know what i'm talking about he's yeah, like oh did yeah. you do f any guys in noto i know about <laughs> yeah oh i want a divorce like it's so crazy how they like will def- diffuse it yeah. with playfulness and yeah. I just, I was just like, this is but so. But they have a very seemingly secure love and relationship yeah. with each other. It's but so it's crazy. like, it's so dysfunctional, like yeah. in, in a way, you know, mm-hmm. but it's interesting because then you have Harper and Ethan who yeah. are looking at this and kind of like knowing that it's like, this is a little bit messed up up or weird Mm -hmm. or like Mm -hmm. I don't know where to put my finger on it but then it's like it's so interesting because it's like okay here you have this couple that are all over each other but they're obviously very dysfunctional and and seemingly unhealthy and they lie to each other right constantly But, but then Harper and Harper and Ethan it's like they're supposedly like, oh, well, we we tell each other everything. We tell each other the truth. We're not cheating on each other. We're just like a yeah. real marriage. But yet, like, we don't really have sex. Like, we don't, yeah. you know, because one of the first things that happens is that, like, you know, Ethan comes back from, like, running or something. And he, like, mm-hmm. right away, like, pulls out his laptop and, like, puts porn on and starts, like, you know, going for it. And it's like. Okay, and then she comes in and like catches him, mm-hmm. and not even catches him because it's not like a stigma or anything. But she comes in and she's like, "Well, why didn't you just like wait, wait? to come back?" Yeah, mm-hmm. like I'm mm-hmm. right here, kind of thing. And I, yeah. I thought that was so interesting. But it was mm-hmm. it was clear that like they're they're looking at this couple as though like, well, what do they have that we don't have? Mm-hmm. We're so much better than them, but are we? Because yeah. We're seemingly not cheating on each other, but yeah. we don't really, we're not really having sex. So right. Hey, but you know problem. what? Yeah. You know what? It's not even at the, at first, it's really not even we, it's just Harper. So it wasn't, it's not even that it was both of them. It was kind of just Harper. And so she brings, she kind of just starts talking to Ethan in like a defense thing because she's mm-hmm. like, well, it's all fake. There's no way they're like that all the time. And she, right. there's a part of her that's kind of, there's a part of her that she's kind of right, but it's like the the real point in, in what, how she's using it is to make herself feel better about the fact that her and Ethan came into this vacation clearly with issues and mm-hmm. Ethan is avoiding them. He's not showing up. He's, he'd rather just watch porn and then face kind of this discrepancy in their sex life and just kind of like, well, you're not a morning person. And, you know, and she's, yeah. and then when she brings up the issue, you know, the things she sees with Cameron and Daphne, he's like, why are you doing that? Like, why are you, you know, mm-hmm. he kind of picks at it, which I also found fascinating because I was like starting to see that's, that's why the romance ain't because y'all are so honest with each other. And so mm. like, pointing out each other's flaws it's like in this kind of jabby way and I was just starting to see like mm. they're not you know Harper and right. Ethan are not what's up they're not <laughs> ain't doing good right. but then it'd be crazy Deb because then then they would have like so then in that same episode I think it was still episode one they're having lunch or something with the other couple and they're just so you know th- they're so different from them and it's basically the whole thing of like well you guys you know do you you guys don't watch the news you guys don't keep up with us you know there's right. different things of just like intellectually they're just kind of like different kind of people and harper and ethan kind of like hold hands in this moment and there's just some some moments where you see oh no they do connect there is a kind of like you know thing mm-hmm. there so it's like it kept me being like okay so you, I felt like there's love there, but then there's just like the, I don't know. So it, it just made everything so fascinating. Yeah. But the most interesting thing that happened <laughs> in the first episode. Yeah. Was. So Cameron, Theo James character lost his, 
his uh, clothes, his luggage <laughs> on the way in. And so he didn't have his swimsuit. So Ethan's like, oh, you could just borrow one of mine. Um, he's like, Harper, you were on our way to get the sunscreen. So just, you know, when you go upstairs, just give him the shorts. He's like, okay, cool. I'll come with you. She's like, okay, whatever. They go up. And she's like, oh, here's the shorts. And he starts saying, like, you know, I'm really glad you guys are here. I really, you know, I really want you guys to get to know us. She's like, okay, yeah, yeah, it's cool. She goes in the bathroom. In the, she goes in the bathroom. She's looking for sunscreen. The door's still open. And he just strips <laughs> naked in the mirror in her line of sight. And his thing, yeah. Do you think... <laughs> Do you think that was intentional on Cameron's part? Okay, so real quick sidebar. I read I read an article that Theo James gave where he was saying that that was actually filmed like fully mm-hmm. frontal, like full yes. frontal nudity, right? Yes. Um, but then it, it ended up, yeah, getting edited out because they felt like it was a little too aggressive. It was yep. a little too like intentional. And mm-hmm. that's one of the things I like about the show is that they they kind of prompt you in situations, but they don't really always tell you. They don't they kind tell of, you. They leave you they questioning. You, yes. They mm-hmm. want you to kind of come up with your own conclusions about it. And that would have felt very like, this is intentional. Like, yeah. if they, you know, so even though he did, she did see it all, them showing it all was like, it was, it was, it was well done. But so do I think it was intentional? I think that Theo James's character, Cameron, is is like he's one of those kind of people that will try anything Mm. and he's trying to like push everyone's buttons like he thinks it's fun to Mm -hmm. push people's buttons to see how far he can take them to like kind of toy with people or play around with people like he just kind of gets off on it. Yeah. So. Do I think he was like trying to be like, yo, let's do something? Mm-hmm. I think I think he'd be kind of like whatever the response sure, was. He just wants a response. He wants a response, but I also think he's just up for anything. Yeah. And he's he's kind of like um he's just kind of like yeah, it's like he likes he likes toying with people. I'll say that. Yeah. What do you think? I think, okay, so to me, this happened right after, shortly after a conversation where, you know, Harper's a lawyer. Yeah. She does a lot of, you know, cases with employ, excuse me, employees Mm -hmm. who are like being harassed by their bosses sexually or whatever. So Theo James is kind of like, they kind of have this little tiff in in the moment of like, well, that's not, you know, sometimes it's just bogus. And and you can kind (laughs) of tell, yeah. Whoever, either you or whoever you work with, y'all be, y'all oh, yeah. are, you know, mm-hmm. us <laughs> rising people, probably. Yeah. And so I think like, but she kind of is like, yeah, not all of them are like that, though. A lot of them are. And, and, and so there's this mm-hmm. kind of power play. I think, I think Cameron uses, like, uses hit, making a, people uncomfortable physically mm-hmm. to, like, overpower them. And mm-hmm. to make like if he can get mm-hmm. you to un- be uncomfortable, if he can get you to react or respond, then he'll feel like he's stronger than you or he's above yeah. you or he's. Mm. And so I think I think that was a part of it of like of like pushing her in that way, whether she was just shocked or whether she would be like, OK, Which right. she was, obviously she wasn't whatever response. The fact that he can affect you yes. is what he wants. Right. And I just found I just found it so interesting. It's so interesting. <laughs> Another thing I was going to bring up is just like Harper as a character. And I wanted to bring bring this up like Harper as a character was interesting to me because she like she's trying to you can tell. She, OK, she's a lawyer. Right. So mm-hmm. most lawyers are very outspoken. Like they're very like they're very confident in like who they are and their opinion and all of that. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can see like Harper trying to walk this line of like trying, like looking at them, like, like looking at Ethan, like, are are these guys for real? Like they don't Mm -hmm. think about the world. They don't think about, they don't watch the news. They just, you know, are these people for real? 
um, and wanting to kind of be like, what? Like, but, but also holding back because mm -hmm. she doesn't want to be seen as like, like a bee or she doesn't want to be like stuck up and have a yeah, stuck up her butt. viewed. Yeah. Viewed in this way because She's like not trying to fit in, but like, so she was yeah. an interesting character because there were times where I felt like her character, like to me, Harper's character would have turned around and been like, what are you doing? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, what are you doing right now? You know, yeah. and that would have pushed back on the, and, and you're right. It's like Theo has this power thing that he kind of mm -hmm. gets off on. And I feel like if Harper had pushed back on it, it would have it would have shown him like, oh, OK, well, I can't really do that with her. But the fact yep. that she didn't mm -hmm. show that there's like a crack th yeah. a little bit there. Another time that it was it was evident was like so they went, you know, the wives went to Noto and mm -hmm. the husband stayed and they had a wild night with, mm -hmm. you know, there were these two prostitutes that were at the hotel that were just like making their rounds um, or like escort type type, yeah, you like know, escort. high class. Yeah. And, and so they, you know, they kind of got with them for the night and they were in their hotel room and basically Cameron ends up sleeping with one of them. Mm -hmm. Ethan has, has an opportunity to do it with the other one, but he doesn't, he kisses her, but then they stop, he stops it. Right. Yeah. But basically Cameron ends up sleeping with this girl on the couch so evidently there was a condom or something. And so the next, you know, when everyone gets back and um, Harper comes, comes back and she finds this condom. Okay. Mm -hmm. This wrapper. And she doesn't say anything. Yeah. Like she goes all day. Yeah. And Kayla, to me, that was not consistent with her character. Like mm -hmm. maybe with, maybe with, Cameron her not being like what are you doing I can see that okay mm -hmm. I can see why she didn't do that but when it came to her husband with Ethan mm -hmm. and how honest they were and forthcoming and like just kind of real they were with each other I found it very interesting that like to me that didn't make sense for her character yeah. to wait all day to say I to him what from. is this like sure. she just seemed like that type. And the fact that she didn't do that was strange to me. What yeah. Do you, what do you think about that? So, well, first, let me just say this, because when yeah. you started talking about Harper, I mentioned something to you yesterday when we were planning the pod. And I was like, there are characters. There was a there was a moment where I was like, I'm going to like this. I'm going to like this season. And it was it was episode two, maybe or whatever, where Harper. Because like. Harper was very like obviously kind of like not up for anything. She didn't want to do like she just was kind of stuck stuck up her butt. And I was like, oh, she's gonna be like this the whole time. This is gonna be the thing. <laughs> but when she was like aware, like mm. I think that's where I was like, oh, she questions herself mm. because she she's aware that she's kind of yeah, you're kind of being stiff. Can you? And when he's right. like, can you just not be like that on this vacation? Can you just loosen up? And then there's a moment where in end of episode two where she's like she apologizes to Ethan. She's like, I'm so sorry. I'm being so annoying. Like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be so good. Like, I'm going to be, this is going to be so fun. And then she's like trying. And even when yeah. she's like trying to like show, like be there for him in the morning for sex. Like, mm -hmm. like yeah. I think even when she's in that bathroom, it's like, I think there she's questioning. Maybe that's mm. not what he was trying to do. Is that yeah. what he was trying to do? Maybe they're just kind of like that. Cause they're really loose. So I feel like to me, that started me kind of thinking, I think Harper is questioning because yeah. they're, they're, they're new to this life of like rich and, you know, these, how these people live. Yep. So when they go on the Noto trip and Daphne is telling her about how Cameron is and about how the people he works with are, and there are these guys that are just like that. And she's like, Ethan's not like that at all. Like he would never do right. that. He would never cheat on me or he would never. And so I think that whole day she's I think she, with Daphne it's making her so then she's calling him right she's like hey like he's not answering so I think there she's like mm -hmm. she's she's questioning I think it's getting to her and so yeah when she finds the condom I think it's just a blow to the one thing they had of like mm -hmm. honesty so yeah. she's prompting him with what happened last night 
Yeah. And trying to give him a chance to tell her mm. and he keeps failing. She kind of gives him the, the test like three times. And then yeah, she's like, you know what? True. I'm going to leave it out here and he's going to find it. And this will be what, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of yeah. how I read it. I didn't. Yeah. I think that from the very beginning, I saw Harper as like, yeah, she is strong willed and she is outspoken. She's kind of like stuck in But that's made her stuck in her ways. Mm-hmm. And I don't think she likes that anymore. So she's trying to shift. So right. that made me see, feel feel like she's, you know. And of, she's starting to realize that, like, I think she wants she wants to fight for her marriage. Like, she's realizing that yeah. her marriage may not be as, like, healthy as she thinks or as, mm-hmm. like, I don't know, as functional as she thinks. And so that is starting to make her question, like, yeah. oh, no, what can I do to, like, exactly. make that better? You no, know, for sure. And, like. Okay, so here's the next thing. What yeah. what did you think of like I thought it was interesting the role reversal that kind of happened mm-hmm. when it came to the cheating because you had her questioning him like what happened and him him not really being forthright until she's like, "Look, I know something went down, so yep. tell me what it was." And you know, a part of it was him trying to cover for his friend, you know, trying to like I feel like he was trying to cover for his friend, um, which to me, I'm like, yeah, I'm your wife. Like, I need to I need to Bump trump him. that for sure. <laughs> yeah. But like it, that question of like, are you telling me the truth? Are you fully telling me the truth? He was. He was like, I didn't do any. Like, I really I, you know, we kissed, but nothing more, you know, but, you know, but it's like I thought it was interesting, the role reversal that took place, because then there comes a point in the season where. You know, and you see it in Harper's character. Like she starts dressing differently. Like she starts yeah. just being very like, try, you know, kind of just trying to be. And it's and and so and there's even this moment where like C- Cameron, like Theo James's character, like like under the table, like at dinner, mm-hmm. like he like touches her knee and she like pushes him away. Like what are you doing? But she yeah. doesn't say anything even about it. You know, but then it. the next day or so, or like one of the last days, they um you know, they're kind of like, oh, you know, we're going to go, you know, well, he, okay, Ethan goes in the water and Cameron and Harper, because Daphne, his wife, Cameron's wife is at a massage. They kind of go to the bar and Mm -hmm. Ethan is looking at them from the water. Then he swims a little bit. Then he comes up again and they're gone. He doesn't see them. So then he goes to the room. (laughs) <laughs> and tries to get in. And the this is one door, of the best scenes to me. Oh, the door is latched. And he's like, what is going on? Like, what he's is going on? bang on the door. He he's bugging pissed. out. Because she's yeah. like, oh, I'm coming. One second. Mm-hmm. One second. <laughs> <laughs> like, excuse me? He's like, oh, why is the door God. latched? She's like, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Really? Girl, really? really? Harper? Right? So so it starts to be this thing of like, what just happened? Like, yep. what's really going on? Because And then the connecting door was, was cracked. The connecting door was cracked. They go out the... She's like, what do you... I came up to get my hat. Like, whatever. What do you mean? I don't know what the door is mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, and then they walk out. Cameron comes out of his room. Hey, guys. Yep. Just wanted to grab something. And it's like... And so Ethan starts having the same thing that Harper had where she's like, yeah. what just happened? Do mm-hmm. I believe what you're saying? What's, you know, and I just thought that was interesting. The role reversal of that, of how mm-hmm. like when Ethan was on the side of like, yo, I didn't do anything. Calm down. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I am telling you the truth. Just relax. It's fine. But then when the role reversed, he's like, you're lying. What do you yeah. mean? What, you know, yeah. and she's just like, what? And there, but so there's so, there's crazy. so much to that, that when it compounded for Ethan on his end, it made sense because it's yeah. like, okay, so first of all, you just, I know that you don't believe me that I didn't do anything. So you think I cheated mm-hmm. on you. Mm-hmm. So what's, who's to say you're not going to try to get back at me by cheating on me. So there's that. Right. Then there's Cameron. He knows how Cameron is. One, Cameron, he just saw Cameron cheat on his wife the other night. And then two, they have this 
oh, this delicious scene where they go, you know, to this winery and and Harper is already like she, she you know, she found a condom and all this stuff. So she's she's just like, well, you know, have you all ever seen watch each other had sex? Oh, I guess old habits die hard. Like she is just <laughs> and Ethan's like. Ethan is like, like the scenes with them were just so delicious to watch. So but delicious. Ethan says, Ethan says to Cameron, yeah, you, you tried to F every girl I liked. Every girl that I liked, you would, right before, I would tell you about it and then you'd go. So he's, wow. I think there is where it started. Like, yo, he's doing this mimetic desire. He mm-hmm. wants the one thing I have, the one thing I have, which is Harper, because I have more money than him. I'm more successful than him. Yep. Whatever. So that's in his head. And then there's this, passage of time and i think the night before they're smoking uh cigars or something and they're all four together and harper and cameron are like staring each other down and daff uh sorry harper looks at ethan watching them so she knows yes that she's getting to him she knows so it's like this whole thing where you're like and so that also was just, oh it's just so good it also so good. Leads us because we never saw what actually happened behind the behind mm-hmm. that door? Yeah, but there's there's this extra ten minutes of time that passed. Yeah, what really happened was it more than just a kiss? Um, and so, but we know all those things that like it, it could have because yeah, she thinks he cheated. Cameron's like, Cameron would not say no to that. Okay, <laughs> no, because he and, was obviously testing the waters too when he was touching her leg. So yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah. and so it just. It was really, it was really fascinating. It was um, fascinating. It really and was. And I think, I think though, okay. <sighs> Sorry, I'm well, about to go on a tangent. Okay, you go ahead. Go let ahead. me, yeah, let me ask a quick question. One of the things yes. that I did think about with, with all of that said that you just said, it's like, one of the things I questioned was like, why, just because this was your college roommate, right? Yep. And y'all have been friends, however, you know, however well you've been friends for however long. It's like, why are you friends with this guy? Like, mm-hmm. why do you feel like you have to be friends with him? Like, right. if this is the way he is, then I was glad that confrontation finally happened. It was very satisfying at the end of the season where he's just mm. like, yo, you tried to have my wife. You like... <laughs> He he went. Listen, and Kayla, went. that whole scene in the water where they're like fighting and like drowning, trying to drown each other. It was like, oh, it, it was, was so crazy. good, it was <laughs> so good. Because even the scene before that, where Harper and e- you know Harper and Ethan are like, he's like, what happened? And like, I didn't do oh anything. Oh my god! And, oh my god! It was so good. The acting was delicious. It was oh my god, phenomenal, right? But Emmy. for me, it was like this thing of like. Why though? Why do you feel mm-hmm. like you have to be friends with this guy? Like, mm-hmm. it's weird. Like- I think he likes to believe that Cameron is harmless. You know, mm-hmm. I think he wants to believe. Like, he's just as in the first episode. Harper's like, so "This is who we're gonna hang out with now." Like, really? Right, right. He's like, he's just the jerk. It's just, it's funny. He doesn't really mean anything by it. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, even when she tells him, "Hey, he got naked in front of me." Yeah, <laughs> he's like. Well, it's not like he, you know, right? I mean, right. He tries to defend it, but in but when all of what we just talked about compounds Ooh. on itself, the cheating thing, and then it becomes, oh no, like th- I might be, I might lose you in this, or or, or yeah. like he's trying to take, he's trying to take you from me, or yeah. when she, when then that's jeopardized, like the scene of them at the table before, yeah, the girls come out and he's like, yeah, I know you got naked in front of her, I know what you're trying to do, like. Stop flirting with my wife. It's like, that's where it starts to be like, yeah, all I know is maybe y'all didn't do X, Y, and Z, but he tried to F you. He did. So yeah. now right. it's over. It's on. So, but here's what's crazy and fascinating about that. Yeah. And then I have one more kind of, we'll have a couple more things. One major question for you, but yes. let me just say this. What's fascinating about that is he argues with Harper. He gets the truth which he doesn't think is the full truth that they just kissed, but he's like, whatever. But he tried to F you. I'm going to go fight him. He goes and fights him. He kind of wins the fight, Mm -hmm. but that didn't really satisfy him. He's walking on the beach. He's struggling. Yeah. And then there's a scene with Daphne, which was 
So interesting. So interesting. And Daphne's whole thing all season has been, hey, do what you need to do to make yourself feel better. Obviously, this woman of God decided <laughs> one of the things is I'm going to have these kids outside of what outside of, you know, my marriage. Like her kids are not Theo James kids. That's crazy. a whole another. That's a whole another can of worms. Yes. Yes. But it seems like they might have went off in the, in the woods. Something happened. Yeah. And that. From there, it's like that's when he kind of lets it go, seemingly. Mm. Like, what did you think about that? Do you think that they slept together? And is it a matter of like, well, hey, I leveled the playing field? Like, I just, I think that was just so messy. <laughs> it was very messy. No, it was very messy. I, I don't think anything happened. I don't. Okay. I think. Him having the opportunity, you know, maybe he was, maybe he probably thought about it. Maybe he got close to it. But I think, I don't know. I just feel like if Ethan was going to do that, he would have done it. You know, when that, when the prostitute was kissing on him and he was just like, mm -hmm. no, like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was one thing though, that was interesting though, was that he stopped that moment, right? The, the, the different, one of the biggest difference for me in both of them was that he stopped. He yep. could have just slept with this prostitute and yep. seemingly no one would have found out because they were away for the night. But with Harper, it was like, oh, well, you walked in. Like you, so my, 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 mm. one of my things was just like, yeah, so y'all stopped. What if I hadn't come though? Like, it's not <laughs> like y'all stopped because you stopped it. That's it was point. like, we were, yeah, but then you walked in. We didn't do anything. It's like, well, no, but it shouldn't have just been because mm. I walked in. So that's very different, right? Yeah. But I just don't know if Ethan, I just don't see Ethan being that person. Yeah. I think he sees that it's like, okay, this is going to start to be like an unhealthy pattern. Mm -hmm. Um, And... So I'll, I'm going to let you answer that question too. But I, I had one other thing mm -hmm. I was going to try to th say too, which was that like, what do you think? Uh, what was interesting to me was that he did go off on this thing with Daphne and then he kind of, it, it was like he let it go, came back to the room and like jumped Harper's bones. Like, okay. Went for it. They had sex. It was all like, oh, oh great, great, great. Right. Mm -hmm. But, and then, you know, seemingly at the end of the whole season, they're in the airport or whatever, and they're all laying on each other and it's very like, great. But one of the things that made me think about was I was just like, yeah, but we never really addressed like, Harper saying to him, like, you're not attracted to me outside of the fact that, like, mm. there's this stuff going on in our marriage with cheating or whatever. Like, you don't want me like you're because mm. she made it like you said, she made herself very available to him. Like he was like, you know, I'm really horny after I get back from running. So there was another day where she like put on sexy lingerie and laid mm -hmm. out and and I don't think they even like when he came back in and they just didn't even have he was sex. like, what are you doing up? <laughs> She's yeah. like. He just completely didn't even he just noticed past it. And so I think that there is an issue that they're not mm -hmm. talking about. There mm -hmm. is something going on that it's like we this is a band-aid basically on it. That, that it's seemingly like, oh, everything's great now. We realize we could have lost this. We realize we really do love each other. We want this. We want to fight for it. Let's, you know, but it was like, it was a very messy way to get there. But For also, sure. I just don't think that's a cute, I don't think that really fixed it because oh, no, you guys no. never really did talk about like, why did we get there though? Because if we got there, we can for sure get there again. Mm -hmm. um, and it shouldn't mm -hmm. take us seemingly almost cheating on each other to get there. <laughs> right. So what totally. Do you think about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I, I was going to ask you the same. So yeah. as a follow up, so I'm, I'm on the same page as you. So one, I, I do think something happened in okay. on the island. I don't think they full on, you know, full on. But I think right. I think something happened. I don't see Ethan going full force. Mm -hmm. But um, 
So what do you think, think happened? That, you think it was like some oral or something happening? I think like, that they probably like fool mess like made out and they were like, all right, this is stupid and probably just left. <laughs> but I think it. that like there's a moment when they were walking on the beach where Ethan realizes what Daphne's doing. Like mm. he stops and is like, and I and my and me and my mom were watching it together and she was like, No, if he keeps walking, he knows what he's going. He's no he knows what's up and he's about mm. it. And he kept walking. So I was like, yeah. I don't think that, like, I I agree with you. Knowing his character, I don't see him fully sleeping with Daphne. They barely even talked this entire time. I don't think that they're, like, into each other like that. I think think for Daphne's perspective, like, uh, a perspective or her kind of, like, system is like I don't it doesn't even matter if I feel this way about it's just for me to feel better about me to yeah. do this yeah so it, which is totally toxic and there's just yeah but anyway um I think that like in this kind of fantastical crazy show it was like yeah what she the, the spillers Ethan and Harper needed a splash of of Cameron and Daphne Mm. and in this messy crazy way that obviously is not a long-term healthy thing right but what what Daphne said to to Ethan I thought there was she was making an interesting point about you know knowing everything about each other and you need a little mystery or something Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. um and even earlier in the season Cameron is like so y'all don't have sex and when he him and Ethan are just talking and Ethan's like, well, it's like when you see each other on the toilet and it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you know, mm-hmm. everything in and out. It's like, it's almost yeah. like he's like, it's not really sexy anymore. Yep. And, and so I kind of, I kind of was like, you know, remembering that. And when, when she does address, and these were one of my favorite scenes, by the way, in this show was all the scenes between Aubrey Plaza and Will Sharp. They just. There was something about their the chemistry that they had they, that was yeah. so, so believable. Good. Like it was just, yeah. and even in their sex scene, it was like, I'll get there. But okay, so <laughs> when they have this conversation, she says, like, you know, you don't want me. Like, mm-hmm. and he kind of is like, stop saying that. And he's yeah. just like, look, I've been going through a lot. Like, work has been so crazy. Like, I'm, and so when I was talking to my mom about it. She was like, well, he's he's just got into this this new he's he's got this new money. He's in this new like place in his life, position of power. Maybe he's struggling with an insecurity of like, you know, with yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And so I think to me, like I was like, those are kind of the issues for I think it's it's really Ethan um, and Harper is obviously trying. Yeah. Um, but I agree. I, I agree. I think that it was it was a band aid. Mm-hmm. Um, them kind of jumping each other's bones and going back to the room. She she asks him like, "What's gonna happen to us? Is this, is this how we're gonna be? We're just gonna be like, yeah, you know this? Yeah." And so, but I do think that when to me it wasn't just really a band aid. It was like he broke through ice mm-hmm. by like. Mm-hmm. By just physically showing her, like, we still got it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that they'll, I like to believe that they'll have those conversations because they can talk, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're able to to communicate. I don't know if they always communicated the best, but I think that they're, they like to talk around stuff. But I think the fact that they feel like honesty with each other is one thing that they that they really were strong on. I'm like, okay, I think they can figure, I think they can like, yeah. knowing that, oh, we do have that, we do still have that spark mm-hmm. in us for each other. Yeah. So that's, that's what I like to to think. But one thing I just want to add, um, I wanted to ask you about the porn thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just wanted to go ahead and add again, I think, I hope that they, I know Aubrey Plaza has been nominated for a Golden Globe. I hope that Will Sharp gets something. He's an amazing talent. But I think that like one of the things I noticed in their acting was a lot of times when you see actors do like love scenes, Mm -hmm. it's like you can tell they're like there. It's it's an awkward thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt like as actors, they just fully surrendered. They did. Committed. They did. And I felt like it really worked because all Mm -hmm. season you watched the passion for each other through their butting heads. Mm -hmm. And it's Mm -hmm. like you felt that same passion sexually 
Yeah. And it just made sense. And I was like, oh, I believe it. Like, yeah, I just yeah. thought it was just fantastic. Like amazing. It really was. And, and so real quick, yeah. I just was going to say, like, to touch on your point of like, I do think it is important to have a little bit of mystery. Like there is, you know, even as you know, like I keep saying this, okay, as someone who's married, like it's it is, you know, it's important, I think, to like keep some of that like mm -hmm. yes you can tell each other everything and you do like yeah if that's something they want it but like you don't have to you don't have to be like i'm gonna go poop now like <laughs> and you and don't sit on and show, it and show and each other no like that's one thing it's so like side but like we've never done that like it's yeah people think it's i mean I know like passing gas is one thing or something or, you know, it's different, yeah, it's, but like yeah. the whole like being in the bathroom, like other than peeing or whatever, it's like there is something to be said when you just like give each other that little bit of space. Like that's OK. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. a little a little bit of that. Now, has he seen me in every like, yeah, like, let's be honest, right. like. I've had three children, so right. he has seen it all. <laughs> like there is a level that like, yeah, mm -hmm. that is, that is a part of like marriage. Like I have to be able to have seen you and still be attracted to you because I have seen everything, but there is something to be said of like, keep a little bit of that mystery or if you yeah. can, or try to like, or try to just like keep up, like try mm -hmm. to be sexy for each other. Don't just yeah. throw it all out. Like, well, you've seen it all now. So like, yeah, it don't matter what I get into bed with. Like, no, have those times where you're still trying to like pull that out. Right. So um, and we'll, we'll move on. I can just quickly say, yeah, what, what touch on the thing. porn yeah. thing. Cause I found that so fascinating. And so don't, fascinating. don't worry about time. We'll just, I'll, okay. I'll make it work. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to like, yeah, real quick, we can touch on it because we have to move on. We have so much other stuff. To yeah, talk no, about, like, we can talk about them all oh day. My gosh, seriously, <laughs> seriously, we could have a whole episode on just them. But like, yeah, when it comes to the porn thing, I do think that's a real that's a real thing. Like, yeah, because because even what I just said, like you can be as sexy as Kim Kardashian. OK, yeah. And it's it's it it does it still doesn't necessarily matter if someone is is like really into that it really mm -hmm. into pornography because um outside of even just like the spiritual just spiritual stuff you know when it comes to that right but even just in a practical standpoint mm -hmm. in a marriage like i know the world has tried to make it this very like destigmatize it and make it seem like it's just it's like what's the big deal it's a healthy thing you know hey watch it together or whatever um, but what people don't realize is that like, it's damaging, like extremely mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's this hyper fantasized version of every, like mm -hmm. the woman on the screen is thinks everything is so like everything turns her on. She's not human. Like she's, yeah. her, She's this fantasized version of everything. So mm -hmm. anything goes like it's not and it's not you don't have to think about her needs or feelings like right. there's no relationship. It's just and so and, and what what pornography is seemingly trying to satisfy it never does. But what is seemingly trying to satisfy is like this kind of lusty kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is not really going to be satisfied by, by your wife. Like, right. It's not pot. It's, I don't want to say it's not possible, but it's like, it can be tainted by that. It can be tainted by the pornography so yeah. that now here you have your wife who is sexy or mm -hmm. even trying to be, or even, even trying to, to do some of it. Like, Hey, you want to do it like that? Let's just, yeah. Hey, let's like, that that you happened know, in the show. Wives, She's like, so yeah. what do you want to do? You want to like, you know? Yeah. Like I'm saying, cause there are, I mean, yeah, there are wives that are like, let's try it. Like, sure. let's, 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 sure. You know, For but sure. it's like Rick recognize that if, if that is a serious, if like, if they're really deeply into that, mm -hmm. you could, you could stand on your head. And it's still not going to quench that because there's yeah. something that, again, it's not fully being quenched, but it is like this itch that's being scratched 
-hmm. but it's like, it's like a mosquito bite. It's like you're mm -hmm. scratching it, but it's just making it worse. It's making yeah. it like, it's actually like, cause it's never satisfied. And that's yeah. why it can get further and deeper and crazier mm -hmm. and crazy, you know, it's not ever going to be quenched. And so yeah. you really got to be careful because if you do want a healthy relationship, healthy marriage, healthy, you know, sex life in that relationship um, where it is give and take, where it is like, this is not just about you being pleasured or, you know, it's about both of us, like catering to each other's needs and caring about what each other need and want and feel and desire. Like, whereas that's just like, and, and it's not just men, like women watch porn too. Like mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not real. It's yeah. like you're having sex with yourself, but also with this fantasy that's yeah. not real. And, and, and to me, you know, there is nothing more satisfying than when you're with a person who actually loves you mm -hmm. and you're, you're fully trying to satisfy each other. So, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And I think that we saw, I think that the show kind of showed us that the detriment of, of it, at least in just Harper connecting, well, I don't look like the girls on the, on the thing. Like I don't, yeah. it's hard to keep up with, you know, X, Y, and Z and, yeah. and her. And I think that it was Ethan's cop out and Ethan's um, it was easier to just do that. And so it was like, well, that's right there. So mm -hmm. because it's right there and readily available to me, I'll, I'll just do that. And I won't have to face this issue that me and my wife have. Yes. And, and it's not asking you of anything. It's not, not like asking you of anything. Yeah. You know what it's I not, mean? It's easy. It's not. It's right. It's no, there's no intimacy. It's, there's no like, no, and, yeah, there's no, mm -hmm. I have to give of myself. I actually wow. have to like, think yeah. about it. It's mm -hmm. just very like mindless. Like, yeah. I don't, it doesn't matter. Like I can yeah. do whatever I want and it's fine. Yeah. You know? And it's, I think that, I think they're making a great point about, cause to me, I can see the big disconnect in the motivation and intention behind that. And like, making love with your partner like right. those are two very different forms because in watching porn and you know um pleasuring yourself it's all about you whereas the other way around it's about the other person and within yep. that you're doing it with each other so you're you are going right. to get pleasure but right. but I think you also and I think it'll segue perfectly into the DeGrasso's because yes, yes. it's like well where does it stop like it's never going to get quenched yeah. Exactly. Where does it end? Right. From from I'm sure for Dominic DeGrasso, um, Michael and Pirioli's character, it's like I'm sure it probably started there and it became yeah. a sex addiction where mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. family is falling apart. Yep. His, you know, his wife and daughter were supposed to be also on this trip and they did not come because of his indiscretions, because of his constant cheating. Yeah. He obviously planned to have to meet Lucia at the resort like he set it up she knew he was when he was gonna show up at the dock when he was coming yeah you don't wow i missed episode? that i missed that he set that in the up. first episode wow. in the first episode her and mia are sitting on the dock and she's like which one is it and he's like i think it's those guys over there so they were in somehow some way i don't know if she's on some kind of site or an app or whatever they be doing Wow. So it's like <laughs> I missed that. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and so th their whole thing was so interesting to me too with when it comes to sexual politics, but I think also just like men and their thoughts on like on kind of especially for Albi, like how, you know, relationally they are with women and how they should treat women and think of women. It was like he, Albie's thinking, oh, my grandfather, and my dad, they just, you know, yep. they don't, obviously don't know how to act. Obviously, they're using women for their for their own, like, desire. And within that, women don't really have autonomy over themselves. But to mm. me, Albie had, a like, the flip side of that issue where because, how, like, he got played by Lucia because yeah. he's thinking she – she, you know, she doesn't have any control over this. This guy mm -hmm. is taking advantage of her. She and Lucia set that whole thing up. That boy, Alessio, was the same boy in the first episode that she was saying bye to at the door before she met up with Mia. <laughs> same character. I was like, yeah, that's the same dude from episode one. Yeah. Like, this is all fake. This is all a long con. Yep. And he only got con because it was like, you have that same thought of like, 
these are wounded birds that I have to mm-hmm. save. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I just thought was so smart to flesh it's out. In a so TV show. many interesting things about it. It's so interesting because you have this man who, you know, seemingly kind of like takes advantage of women, not in a way of like he's raping women or something, but he's taking, you know, using them for his own pleasure, right? The father, the, the you know, Dom, or Dominic, he's, he's yeah. just, yeah, he has this sex addiction and he's married, but he's just had crazy indiscretions. And we've seen that from their conversations, his, you know, the grandfather mm-hmm. was, it's like a generational thing. You know, mm-hmm. you have a family, you have a wife and That kid. Italian, because they're from Italy. It's like that Italian yep. godfather, Sopranos exactly. type of thing. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting even when they brought up the godfather. I'd never thought of it that way. It's like, mm-hmm. it's such a, you know, it was so interesting how the son brought it up. Like, yeah, the, the godfather is such a male fantasy because it's mm-hmm. like, you have, you know, you have everything, you have the wife, you have the kids, you, yep. you, but you can have sex with whoever you want and no one has questions. Like you can do whatever you, and no one asks you any questions. Um, and so, but it was definitely this generational thing that you see like this man who is, you know, at, he uses women for his own kind of pleasures and devices, but then she's kind of using him. And it's interesting that you say he set that up because, well, you know, obviously at the end of all of that, like he ends up paying her like fifty thousand dollars. And yeah. it's like, <laughs> so you got played and he knows, like he knows, and it's he almost like knows. He, he's kind of like, All right, this is what I get. You know, it makes so much sense mm-hmm. that he set that up because it's like, Well, this is what you get. Because if mm-hmm. you had never set this up, then this yep. would never have happened. You would not so be true. paying this girl fifty thousand dollars because your son is like he, she needs it and she needs to get out of her situation. Blah 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 blah. Right? Yeah. Um, but then also the whole dynamic with Albi trying so hard to be different from his mm-hmm. father and his grandfather, mm-hmm. trying to be very woke and feminist. You know, being a male, fe- like yeah. just you know, super like hey positive for women and like treat them well and have this great relationship with them and he's putting that out there um and at first you know he starts seeing this that one of the characters named Portia and we'll get to her mm-hmm. at some point but like you know he really likes her they're trying to mm-hmm. but Albie is like too sweet it's almost like he's too nice he's too, <laughs> yeah. too ridiculous right? right but he gets taken advantage of how how crazy is it that here he is then he ends up starting to like this prostitute. They start spending time together. He doesn't know she's a prostitute. Um, and then even after he kind of finds out, they still kind of start spending time together. He thinks, man, she really likes me. I'm helping her try to get out. And then lo and behold, it was a con, right? Yeah. Um, so it, it's just so many facets to it that were so interesting. interesting. And, um, and, and also and because you didn't, you weren't sure if Lucia was really conning him. I kind of just always thought she was, but there were a lot of people, is she? Like my brother, Kerwin was like, I don't know. I think she really does like him. And that I love the way that they played that because it they she never blatantly said to Mia, this is what, you know. Yeah. But it, it, yeah. Very but also, Kay, I, w- I was going to ask you this. Like, Go ahead. do you think that she did have real feelings for Albie at some point. I think it was, I think it was a mix of both. I think that, mm-hmm. I think it was like a pleasant surprise that she was like, I kind of like him. He's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. this would, you know, but also he has a lot of money. I'm not mm-hmm. plan on sticking with him. It's kind of like the cherry on top of it is that he's really nice and he treats me well. And I think when yeah. she would say like, no, you are really nice. I do really like you. Or when she'd be like, I wish all men were like you. I think she was mm-hmm. being re- legit. Yeah. But I think she still was gonna. Yeah. Cause there was just this moment him. where like one of the times they were like having sex and like, you know, it was just, I don't know. It was an intimate moment. It wasn't all, yeah, it wasn't always like about. sex. It wasn't always just like this physical act. It was, there was intimacy there as well where yeah. they like, they kind of hugged or something after. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it just felt very like personal. It did. It didn't, yeah. It, it, it fe- and it, it even in, and it was like, they showed her face, which mm-hmm. I thought was, was very, you know, poignant because it was mm-hmm. like, 
you're seeing her face and her face is one because you know he's into you know he's like yeah really you know he's girl. about really it. Feeling it yeah he's really feeling this girl and because seemingly it was like even after he found out that she was a prostitute and he was like oh i didn't know but i can pay you or whatever then when she was like well we'll see each other again at night he was kind of like well he was trying to feel out like mm-hmm. i'm uncomfortable with paying you for sex like I'm there's he wasn't saying like there's anything wrong with it but he was just kind of like I don't I'm not comfortable with it because I feel like and and she kind of was just like it's fine like I like you you don't have to pay me yeah yeah like as though and so she made it seem as though and so I don't know for a minute I I don't know I I didn't buy I I that was a part of the con though it was a part of the con you don't have to pay me and then it was this whole thing of Oh, this, uh, that's a then it, that's why Alessio is there. Yeah. That's why this Alessio. I have fake to be honest. Character. I bought it. I bought it a little bit. No, there I, were a lot of people who bought it. Yeah, I bought it a little bit. Like I, I, I yeah. wondered even her saying goodbye to Alessio and and him then him him, you know. But but the thing that did I did start to wonder, is this legit? When, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious, the moment where. They were well, they went somewhere together, and Alessio seemingly is like stalking her and following her in the car. And then they pull over, and she's like, I need to just go with him. And mm-hmm. I just thought it was a riot that the grandfather was like, We're letting her get kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's like, What do you mean? Like, what are we doing? You know, and the father's like, I tried, but she wants to go. You know, he's yeah. like, No, you're not going. And she's like, I yeah. need to go. And he's just like, But no, we'll what? protect you if you right. get it. Like, and then the grandfather's just like, We're letting her get kidnapped. <laughs> just letting her. Like, it was a right. I thought that no, was there was hilarious. so many moments. F. Murray Abraham oh, as Bert was just a <laughs> riot. The entire time, so his character good. was just so but, good. Like, that was the moment where I was like, when after that, because for a second, I was like, oh, my God, what if she's the person that does? What if, like, right. her going off with this is going to be, like, bad for her or something? But then when, like, that night, she shows she's up and there. she's fine. Everything's fine. Yep. That's when I was like, I don't know. But yep. then, I don't know. I bought it. Because for a hot <laughs> You kept second, going back and forth. I, back 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 I get it. That's what they wanted. That's what they wanted. Because I was like, I man, think- maybe getting her mm-hmm. out – but but then the fifty thousand, I was like, no, this is a con. You know, if mm-hmm. anything, I thought Albie was going to be like, let's take her back with us. Like, let's try to get her. Just you know, escape. let's just escape. Let's just go to bring her with us to L.A. I thought that was going to be the language. But then when he was like, yo, she needs fifty thousand, I was like, yeah, no, this is a yeah. con. <laughs> but I thought it was interesting how you just mm-hmm. you didn't know. You know? It, yeah, I love I love the way they played that. I think the other big point for me was Mia. Mia. I mean, I feel like if Alessia was really after her, really, and she was in danger. We would have seen her been talking to Mia like, oh, my God, Alessio's back. Right. But that wasn't a thing at all. Mia, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So I was just like, yeah. And she kept just being like, don't worry about it. It's not your problem. It's OK. I'm like, <laughs> right. She's pulling on this guy's heart strings. Yeah. But yeah. I, what another thing I found fascinating was Portia and mm-hmm. her decision between leaving Albie and getting with Jack. And I think the most, yep. to me, the core of her thing was like, when she talked to Tanya and was like, I always, I always F stuff up. Like if I won the lottery, I would like lose the ticket. Like I'd throw it away. Like <laughs> I, when I have something good, I just yeah. fudge it up. So I should give this guy a chance. But then it's like, the guy doesn't really make my heart race. And then, then the man that made your heart race, did your heart race? <laughs> <laughs> I bet your heart did race, didn't it? Because I bet it raced. Oh my lord! Was your blood pressure high? Because <laughs> my god, it wasn't. You got it. kidnapped, girl. You know the gays were after Tanya. If you watch the show, you know what we mean by that. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, but yeah, back to that point. Just like it was yeah. just fascinating of like her being like, okay, it's a nice guy. I would eat, like, mm-hmm. and so they and kind of like tiptoed around that and yeah. overlooking him. Yeah. 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 Um. And then but. going for the guy who's like looks a little seems a little dangerous, a little bit more mm-hmm. like he has that edge to him, that that swag to him. And yep. you know, and then here you have Albie getting taken advantage of by you know yep. 
So it's just, yeah. it's so sad because it is like, and, and just to finish out the DeGrasso's, like when mm-hmm. it came to Albi, it's like, I can see why Met, he's trying so hard not to perpetuate this cycle of his, of his family, his grandfather's yeah. this way, his father's this way. But it's like, here's Albi trying to be this nice guy. He's trying mm-hmm. to be this really guy, a sweet guy, kind gentle loving like understanding listening he's just a great guy mm-hmm. and he gets taken advantage of yeah. and so you can kind of, it's almost like we as women get so mad that we look at these mm. men that end up this like why are you like this with women why do you treat women like this why do you you know yeah. but it's like we're almost seeing the beginning of that with Albie because right you can see why maybe he he gets from where he is to where he That's made. a good point. You know, because you're like. Because either you throw me away. Either you throw me away or I'm taking. Portia or I'm taking advantage of like. Lucia. Yeah. So, and so it's almost like I should just treat you any old, you know, I should just get, mm-hmm. it should just be about my pleasure and not, yeah. let, let me not think about you. Yeah. Let me think about me. And, and I think and, there were also know. such a great point, Deb, but I think there's, there's also a little hint of, maybe that d- d- old DeGrasso stuff still in there because he kind of does compromise his mom for what he wants with Lucia by being like, Hey, I'll tell mom that you really are better. Like I'll tell her you cried. I'll tell her you so struggled through the whole vacation. Like, you know, and then we yeah. watch them at the airport and all three of them watch that hot girl walk by and you're like, and they all, all turn the their heads. Also, they all turn their head. <laughs> Even Alvi, like, yeah. So it's just, yeah. it's just, it was fascinating. But it was um, very fascinating for sure. But yeah, you want to go to Tanya and and um, let's go to Tanya and Portia. Ended? Yeah. So, because yeah. we pretty much talked about Mia and Lucia. So yeah, when it comes to um, so Tanya and Portia, <laughs> <laughs> this was the I was like I said I was glad I watched Tanya in the first season because I you know it was interesting to see That's her the context the context of you know her kind of um you know meeting this guy at the end of season one and uh, you know in the beginning of season two we're like oh my god she married this guy you know mm-hmm. like really mm-hmm. because she is this person who you can tell just kind of gets taken advantage of she has a lot of money and um you're wondering is this guy that she's with her husband is he legit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um so come to find out, we watch season two and, you know, she spends spending all these time with these with these gay men who are, which I thought was interesting because Mike White is gay. I'm pretty sure. He's right? bisexual. Mm-hmm. OK. Um, and he, you know, he he said he wanted to put he wanted to make the gay guys like the bad guys. Like, yeah, he felt like. They're never the bad guy. They're, They're never the bad like, guy. Yeah, like he wants this well-rounded, like, hey, gay guys can be bad guys too. It's okay. Right, like, it's all right. right, guys. We can do that. And so, <laughs> um, so you know, you see her spending all this time. And it was just so interesting because she finally let her guard down with these guys who mm-hmm. you thought, like, maybe Understood this is- like, her. And, yeah. Yeah. And just, we're just being nice and kind mm-hmm. and, like- Everything was like, and, and you're wondering, like, is the other shoe going to drop? What is this mm-hmm. really going to be like? Right. Um, and then, you know, you realize that it was a con, you know, it was a, a con from the beginning because she had a When prenup. did you start, when did you start realizing that it was a con? Uh, I bought it. I really bought, bought it. You bought I, it all the way through. Girl, I didn't realize it was a con until... I was I was trying to figure out what is this about? Right. What's going on? What's really going on? Is this yeah. are these guys really just this kind to her? Like for no yeah. reason? For no reason. You know? Yeah. But yeah, it wasn't until even it was like when everyone else did. It was like when she first looked at that picture. Okay. And realized that that was Greg. I didn't realize oh, you didn't realize that that Not was until the oh. second time. Not until Got she looked at it, it again. When she looked at it again, I was like, wait a minute. That's her husband. So see, I I was like caught up in the you, theories and the TikToks and stuff. Yeah, so I wasn't people, looking at any of that stuff, which is so, great because yeah. it definitely ruins the edge of the like. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's when I started started being like, I always was like, this is out of nowhere. Why are these guys so obsessed with her? Yeah. But 
it, I think it was all in the same episode. So they have a conversation, her and Quentin of the head gay of the crew. <laughs> Quentin, um, Tom Hollander's character, they yeah. have a conversation. He was really good, talked, by the way. He was, he was so really good. good. He was, he was so, so sinister, good. but like, yes. like maybe he's but just being like. kind, loving way. Like, yeah, so it was crazy. so. Yeah. Uh, all the acting was amazing. Okay. okay. So they have a conversation and he's basically like talking about this cowboy and this whole scenario and he says to her like I fell in love with him he's heterosexual but like I would do anything for him and I still would now 30 so years later. So she's the cowboy. Greg. Greg is the cowboy. Greg is the I cowboy. Was, yes okay sorry go ahead. So there was that. Yeah. Then in the same episode completely different storyline obviously Theo, mm-hmm. James, Cameron, Ethan, Daphne Harper they're all at breakfast and they're talking about these Italians and they own these palazzos mm-hmm. and they own these yachts, but they don't actually have any money. Right. And so they need yep. these ways to get actual like income. And I remember that like these, I don't think that they, they don't have no real money. Like he, yes. so maybe they're, so I started picking it up there. And of course mm. we're seeing Greg on the side Mm-hmm. having these side conversations yes yes she knows nothing and at first you're like maybe he's just cheating but then it's like yeah why did I he, he just, just randomly married yeah. why did he just randomly marry tanya she has all this money he was sick before he needed her like she paid for all his treatments like it just kind of started all adding up to me and i was like oh this is crazy <laughs> how is this gonna end then of course the shocking scene of jack you know, being a sex worker as well. Yeah. Yeah. Was a huge tell. I was like, Crazy. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're all yeah. something sinister is going down. Jack yep. is in on it. Yeah. You know, he's that's why he's approached part Portia. This is not a real mm-hmm. relationship. Like everything. So, yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> my God. And that was a part of it where I was like, how are they going to finish everything in one episode? Like, yeah. I was yeah. like, they need at least one more to wrap everything up, but somehow they did. <laughs> no, they did. Um, and it, it, it's interesting, too, because, like, one thing I was going to say was just, like, it's so true that, like, him putting that out there of, like, the gay guys can be the bad guys, mm-hmm. you can see that that, like, stereotype is kind of there because I did not, that was one of the reasons. Yeah, I you were like, they it. wouldn't do that. Because I'm like, <laughs> because, because you know what it was? It was that, like, she was being taken advantage of, you know, by her, by a guy trying to, you know, ha- sure. like her husband in the first season. It's like, mm-hmm. or the guy in the first season, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, he's going to pretend like he likes her and pretend like he's mad in, madly in love with her to get her money. But when it's a gay guy, you're like, well, he's not going to try to, you know, mm-hmm. so you're just thinking like, yeah. it's innocent. He's just being nice. Yeah, <laughs> right. Not no, thinking so of, true. but yeah, it wasn't until she looked at the picture again and then, you know. That whole scene, Kayla, of like her, like Portia realizing it because Jack yeah. got too drunk. So he kind of let it slip. Crazy. And then she gets a gets a hold of like his phone because he steals her phone. And she calls. Tom Which is and- like, girl, if you don't call an girl. Uber and have somebody pick you up and take you back. Are you what? Listen. Why? Yes. She was being so stupid. So d- listen, white people. <laughs> <laughs> We love you, but sometimes we in them you. shows, y'all be <laughs> acting crazy. In girl, shows, I would have been running. I would have been a black, out. If that was a black girl, she would have been out of here. <laughs> she wouldn't be getting out the car. Jack, is everything okay as I'm getting kidnapped? Child, if you don't run to the nearest <laughs> Oh, my shop. God. No, but that scene of, like, her on the phone with her, like, telling yeah. her what was really going on. And that was so good. And then Tanya. So true. But same thing with Tanya. It's like she's on this boat with these guys. Mm-hmm. She doesn't know what to do, how to act. Should I? Like, in my mind, I was like, girl, like, when this. they docked and they were close but not all the way there, I was like, jump in the water and swim. Like, yeah. Swim to shore. Like, why yeah. are you still on this boat? You know why? But, what are they going to do? Shoot you in the uh, in the open? Is they're going to get caught? Just right. just escape, escape, yeah. and do it in daylight. Like she should have done right. it once they got there. She should have jumped in the water and swam. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just try at least try. You know. Try. But um, I thought it was so interesting how like yeah. that whole thing went down. And I read mm-hmm. something that like Mike White was saying like he knew Tanya was going to be the one that died in this mm-hmm. se- in the season mm-hmm. and. Um, and it was so fitting. I was kind of sad that Tanya died. I was like, oh, Tanya had to die. But like, I kind of, 
you know, he wanted it to be like, it wasn't at the hands of someone else. So that mm. moment of her like killing Just everybody flipping. was so oh, crazy. Yeah. So crazy. <laughs> I mean, loved that her grabbing the bag grabbing the gun and like just coming out like oh my gosh she acted so good in that so scene. good oh, oh my God. Jennifer Coolidge I was like girl you better act because she act. was like so horrified and scared but also just like fighting her way mm -hmm. and so it was just so tragic because mm -hmm. here she is she literally killed everybody on board <laughs> yeah and then is trying to figure out how do I get out of the boat to get into the smaller boat to try mm -hmm. to get and she falls and hits her she falls head and hits her head and that's how she dies it's like, just such a Tanya it's way so fitting, it's so so fitting. fitting. <laughs> I laughed but then I was like wait oh my god no oh, I was like right. so sad but it was so sad. no I love the way that entire sequence was even filmed like you didn't so actually good. see that the, the shots hit the bodies it was just yes her, on the camera was on her which I thought was such that's a creative so nuanced way to film that yes um because you didn't really need to see it. Um, mm -hmm. So it just was, it, and even her being like, is Greg cheating on me? Just tell me. I was like, <laughs> why is that the last thing you want to know? How about, are you guys trying That's to steal right. from me? <laughs> oh my no, gosh. Yeah. So, okay, so quick, what do yes. you think Greg got away with it? Like, every, you know, there's d different theories people are asking. I know. Like, do you think Greg, like, I think for now he's is gonna Portia get away with it. Is Portia gonna say something? And maybe... I think, I think because I think Portia is probably gonna. De she was. She's gonna figure that out. Like, am I gonna speak up? Am I gonna say something? Mm -hmm. She's gonna probably struggle with that because she's the one person who can witness yep. to the truth. Um, so I think it'll be a thing of like hanging in the air. We probably will never know. I don't think they should carry the story over into season three. I think without Jennifer Coolidge, it's just kind of like, I don't really know if I care enough without yeah. her being there. For sure. But um, I think for now, Greg did get away. I think the bad guy might have won. That um, sucks. So I think some sucks, people are like but... thinking that it'll eventually get back to him and that it'll, you know. I think eventually it will. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or I I wish there was like a clause somewhere in her, like a hidden I clause know. in her will or something I that know. like, you know, I don't know. I just, you just don't want to see him win, you know. I wish the somehow other... Portia could get that money or. Yo, you that know. was what I was thinking. Like maybe there was a hidden clause in the will that like all of a sudden, like at the very last minute, she changed and made everything like gave everything to Portia. Portia. You know? Yeah, that'd be yeah. nice. Um, because I thought it was interesting, even the parallel of mm -hmm. of Portia and Tanya. Like they were trying mm -hmm. to show like is mm -hmm. Portia like a lot like her? She said that you're yeah. a lot like me when I was younger. And it, mm -hmm. there was a quote that she said that was so interesting to me at one point. She said, um, uh, Tanya was saying to Portia, you know, I was always just like this little doll waiting for someone to play with me. Like she was yeah. thinking of her life and yep. she was like, when you're empty inside and you have mm -hmm. no direction, you'll end up in some crazy places, but you'll still be lost. So and good. I was just like, yo, that is so, got chills. Good. so wise goosebumps. Cause yeah. it's like, here's this woman who's like at the end of her life, unknowingly at the end mm -hmm. of her life. And realizing that like she's kind of taking stock of like how she's gone about it and mm -hmm. and trying to like help Portia a little bit with like girl you gotta have some direction yeah. you gotta she's have... like be it together Portia that's what yes. I'm trying to say <laughs> pretty much <laughs> like because you don't want to be me you don't want to yeah. end up like me you know and mm -hmm. and it was it was very interesting because even if like we just talked about the the difference between the Albies and the Jacks like here you are going for the jacks and yeah. this guy is crazy. So, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it was, I just thought yeah. that was interesting. Also, here's a mm -hmm. quick question. Did sure. you think that Jack was mm -hmm. going to, was supposed to kill Portia and just decided not to or chicken? I out? think so. Cause like, what, what was he going to do? Like when he says, you don't want to go back to Termina, like, because it, to him, the, the he doesn't know that the rest mm -hmm. of the crew is gonna, is dead or about to right. die. So he's like, if you go back, like they're going to kill you, you know? You so I think that, yeah, that was his, he's, I think that was his job was to take her out there and finish the job. Um, and so I think he her. fully just like, I think so, because yeah. 
him taking her to the airport and being like, look, the airport's up there. Just go. Don't be stupid. Don't try to run mm -hmm. back. And I think yeah. that was his way of like, let me do the right thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, because I don't think there was any other option um, mm -hmm. for Portia, I think. They, they didn't trust her so they had to she had to go yeah so um yeah. but yeah i don't i think that from the beginning though jack was playing her as well i don't i think that he might i think that him saving her in that way indirectly i guess you could say was showing mm -hmm. that he he cared enough to see he had a life. heart yeah he had a heart but yeah. um you know because it's not like he's crazy evil i mean he's compromised he's kind of a, almost a sl sex slave almost is worse than Lucia mm. like Lucia being a sex worker is one thing she's getting a give and take but it's like we'll give you this life if you do anything we ask and you yeah. keep with us and that's right. a whole different thing of like he so doesn't true. have any money he couldn't pay, pay, pay for an arancini like yeah it's so the true. rice ball that costs a couple dollars he doesn't actually have any money of his own he's just right. there with him because yeah. his life was crap and that was so fascinating. His that was fascinating. kind of giving us a peek behind his backstory. But mm -hmm. um, yep. my my last question for you is, oh, well, let me just say this one thing about Valentina. I thought that I liked her yeah. character. At first, I didn't really care as much. Mm -hmm. I just found her funny. And like, I thought the actress was 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 so great in the mm -hmm. role. Yeah. Definitely different from season one's manager. He was way more part of like the thick of the core you know, <laughs> yeah. story. Yeah. He was so great. I loved watching He was so watching good. Him. Yeah, he really was. But uh, yeah, I, I, I liked watching her story. I liked that at the mm -hmm. end she kind of loosened up and she kind of, mm -hmm. you know, in this journey of like kind of figuring herself out. Um, yeah. But okay, final question because I've really, I got to run, but. Yeah, you got to go. <clears throat> did you feel satisfied by the ending of the season? Because there are some people who weren't. So, okay, real quick, let me say this one thing about Valentina and then I'll- Oh, sure. So yeah, one thing I wanted to say about Valentina that I thought was really interesting was how she, you know, so she was seemingly like this closeted lesbian or closeted, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. or, or never really realized it or never really let herself kind of um, go that way or whatever. Um, right, yeah. Yeah. And, and, but she came, she, in the very beginning, it was this very like- she was making decisions for this other girl based Isabella, on like, yeah. Yeah. Because like, he's, he's harassing you. It was almost mm. like he's, he's, you know, is that making you uncomfortable? Like you're, it's making you uncomfortable. So I'm going to move him and I'm going to mm. bring someone else. But really I thought that was interesting because it's like, you're doing that though for your own gain. Though. Yeah. So right. it's almost like, and now you're kind of harassing her a little bit. Like, you know, it yeah, was weird. so it true. Was like, it was like you're you're the one who's actually making like yeah, under you, you know, it. underlying like passes at her. That, Absolutely. It, yeah, and she wasn't like, aware of. She thought she was just being friendly. Isabella yeah, just thought she yeah. was being friendly. Totally. You know, Isabella, and she wasn't yeah. taking it in a way that was like making her uncomfortable. But I just thought that was interesting because I'm so like fascinating, yeah. it's like you're you're projecting this very like, oh my God, man, men, and they men, harass yeah. and they, you know, it's just so whatever. And it's like, come to find out she's even dating this guy. So she even, she likes them anyway, but yeah. it's like, well, well, what's really going on? Because you're trying to kind of take advantage a little bit yourself. You're trying to mm -hmm. have her. But then when you realize like, oh, she's not interested. Now you're kind of stuck in this like, oh, yeah. you know. So I no, just thought was that was fascinating. really, really yeah. interesting, you know. Yeah, um, it was. But yeah, so for me, like just to wrap it up, um, I, I think that I was satisfied with mm -hmm. with the ending. I was because yeah. it didn't feel like a, I, I was very aware of the unanswered questions, but it didn't feel like lost, you know, like the show lost where you're like, yeah, right. Like, come on, <laughs> you're not going to not answer that and think mm -hmm. you're just getting away with like mm -hmm. some things need to be answered and some things don't. And I think for me, the questions that were not fully answered, mm -hmm. it, I liked it because it was like, you're supposed to just come up with your own conclusions of like, yeah. how do you think this all went down? Um, but yeah, I was satisfied. The one, uh, yeah. uh, I mean, a part of me was like, man, if I was that father in the DeGrasso, I would have been like, stop payment on that. Like, 
<laughs> right. Stop him on yeah. a fire or yeah. something. Because when Albie woke up and she was gone, or when she was leaving the next morning and he woke up and she was gone and he realized it was a it was a con. Um, it was a part of me that was just like, yo, 50 G's, dag. Like, but yeah. I don't know. I wasn't unsatisfied with the ending as a whole. I felt like it was so good. It was just yeah. so good. And I was I satisfied. agree. I what don't are think that's the... unsatisfied about though. I think people are unsatisfied because those questions weren't blatantly answered Mm -hmm. they were mostly alluded Mm -hmm. to and left up for the imagination one of them i think you know is kind of theo james and daphne their relationship you know are those really his kids they not they never address it like but i think it's it's alluded to when he's in the bathroom and he has his face in the mirror when she's on FaceTime with them. It's like, it's clear he knows. And I think that that's what makes it interesting. And I think sometimes when shows, when shows, if there was a scene where he blatantly said it to her and they had this, it's like, that kind of wouldn't be realistic. And that's a part of their dynamic. Like we saw part of their dynamic. It makes sense for them to not address it. It makes sense for them to leave this vacation. Seemingly everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, and it wouldn't have made sense. Like, I don't really know if people expected them to like leave the vacation. Not okay. I don't think that would have made sense for the show. I don't. Either. Um, and sometimes in life it's like things aren't like that. And I feel like that's what the, one of the strengths of the show is that it felt so real mm-hmm. in this fantastical way, but it felt so real. All, all yeah. of the conversations, all of the way that the, you know, different storylines fleshed out Absolutely. felt very very real so and i felt like every storyline had a resolution even if we didn't get every detail flattened out and ironed out okay that's exactly what happened between them got it it's like i don't really need need to know exactly what happened between cameron and harper in the room because at the end of the day it didn't really matter it didn't whatever happened led led them led harper and ethan back together so Yep. It's more fun that way. And, and it's I that think- gray area of like, you're, they're not going to know. Because at some point, yeah. you have to either believe this person or not. And, but yeah. there's always a chance that they're lying. It's it's just the yep. it's it's true. of life. So it makes sense that there is yeah. no, you know, that makes the one thing The one thing I wish that they did do was show Albie finding out that his dad did sleep with Lucia. Because I, I just wanted to, the mm. whole time I was like, he's going to find out. He's going to, I was expecting him to find out. That they both that he had a thing with her, so I was a little a little disappointed by that. But mm. I think in knowing the point of their storyline, it it, yeah. it kind of would have like undercut, like the point of it was yeah. it would have undercut the the point of of their ending. Do so, you feel like um, the father changed? Because that was another thing people were wondering. Like, do you I was going like to ask you the thing. There was a little bit of that, like. You know, he stopped with her and it didn't he have did. anything to do with with his son. You know, he yeah. stopped because he is starting to realize like, you know, there was even I one really point where he change. went he went on to a porn site or something. And he he was just like, yeah, uh, he closed it. Yeah, yeah, it was like, he was I think like, he oh, did. I'm so tired. I think he did. This, you know, yeah. yeah. And I thought that also I just I thought that Michael Imperioli just everyone in the show. I just yeah, love watching so actors perform i just Mm -hmm. felt like he just did such a great performance of like the subtlety of his facial acting and yes um in in the scene with his with his dad where he's like you never show me how to love a woman you never Mm. showed me how to it was just he's like realizing his issues and i think that is kind of the turn for him Mm -hmm. because bert's Mm -hmm. like well you're showing albie what what to do so i think he's like i really need to change and yep. him watching, him looking at the photos of their family and crying. I just, I believe yeah. that he, that he, mm-hmm. he's trying. And I, I, that was satisfying to me. It was, um, it was, it was. So I, I loved the ending. I loved the show. Again, if you guys, if you're at, if you listen to this, but you still haven't <laughs> watched it still, it's, it's not. It's listen. so can, good. I could go rewatch that show right now, knowing everything Easily. and still be entertained and so, be like, oh yes. my gosh, this great show. One million percent. Out. Check it out. Um, And thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Um, Thank you for tuning in. Definitely share this with people who love White Lotus or if you want to talk about some of the intricacies (laughs) of what we've talked about today, um, definitely hit that like button and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. 
Follow us on Spotify and Apple uh, Podcasts. Um, next week, we will be back with another um, episode. We're going to be talking about Harry and Meghan. Woo, if you haven't watched the Netflix special yet, watch it. The Doctor series yeah. is so good. I cannot wait mm -hmm. to talk about it. I know the final three episodes came out today, I think. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're going to be touching on Harry and Meghan next week. Um, Avatar, the new Avatar movie. And then we're also going to be doing like our favorite, like our list of fa our favorite films of the year, just because it's mm -hmm. like the end of the year. So um your, our favorite films and shows of the year. The so mm -hmm. definitely hit those in the comments below, guys. Um, and yeah. we'll maybe like talk about some of those if they were our favorites as well. Um, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you so yeah. much for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>